I'm Andre. Welcome to my craft room. I'm so excited that you're here today because we are going to make a fall topiary. I love fall. I love the colors. I'm even wearing my pumpkin shirt. This is a shirt that I bought actually for Halloween, but I wear it most uh, falls. And for Halloween, all I have to do is stuff it around the middle, which I'm going to do today just for fun. So what we're going to do with our topiary is we are going to be stacking three pumpkins together on a wood dowel. And I have the supplies that you need. I'll have them on our Facebook site, which is Andre's Art and Crafts, and I will also have them listed below. I'm excited. I'll see you in class. We're going to start assembling our topiary now but what we have to do first is we have to hollow out the center of our stair step pumpkins and we've got three of them and I purchased ones that were all pretty close to the same color but you can get different colors if you want those are actually very pretty too so you get they have them in white they've got them some of them are have some green in them but I like these, these ones that are really orange. What I'm doing here is I have twisted the stem in that big pumpkin. I've twisted around almost two times so that the glue will, will release. And now I'm finding inside a whole bunch of sticks. And I am guessing that they put those in there along with some glue so that if somebody picked up the pumpkin by its stem that it wouldn't fall and break in your you know in the, the craft store so I'm taking now a knife and it's a serrated knife that I bought at the dollar store the Dollar Tree and um, it's just like a steak knife now be very very careful and don't get your fingers near this knife it's got a real sharp edge on it it might not be a bad idea to wear a pair of work gloves or workman's gloves that are kind of leather. I've cut all the way around straight down and that's really important. You want to go straight down in the center of the pumpkin. And now I'm coming to the bottom of the pumpkin and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to be cutting straight down and as I cut straight down I'm going to feel that I'm meeting up with where I cut down from the top of the pumpkin there's you're gonna feel it because there won't be as much resistance when you push into the pumpkin and this is styrofoam that's in the center of it and we're gonna try to break that styrofoam all up but I don't know how many of you have worked with styrofoam but it is really messy and it's got a lot of static to it so it'll stick to everything but I'm gonna show you a trick here after a while how to deal with that sticky staticky styrofoam now I'm going to be cutting that little portion at the bottom out and when I do I'm going to bring my knife in and just really break all of that up if I break it all up then it's going to be easy to take a dowel and just push it straight out and I'll take the dowel from the top and from the bottom so here I am going down the top of the pumpkin now and breaking that styrofoam up this really doesn't take very long to do this prep work but hollowing the the pumpkins out you just want to make sure that you have cut straight down the middle of the pumpkin and that'll keep your topiary level and this is where I am pushing the dowel down in and I'm kind of pushing that styrofoam out and I can see that it looks like a piece kind of came out already and I'm going to push the other way now and I'll get that styrofoam pretty much pushed out of the pumpkin and once we do that then we're going to get ready where we can start putting our pumpkin together on the dowel and that's going to take a lot of glue and what I'm using is E6000 and E6000 is a glue that is very strong and it's good for projects outside 
I, when I'm going to do a topiary inside, I will use my glue gun. But the E6000 is really good for being able to stand up to temperatures outside. Here's my trick uh, that I told you I was going to show you. I take a spray bottle and spray down the surface and a, and a rag and it just seems to tame the styrofoam. Uh, once the styrofoam is wet, it's not as staticky. And so you can do this if you're working with styrofoam and you're cutting styrofoam or even styrofoam that comes out of the inside of packages when you get them. Um, when you have all that styrofoam that comes like around a computer or around an, a piece of an appliance, um, if once you take it apart, you have styrofoam all over the house. But get it wet and then it will come right up. So at this point, then I'm going to start assembling the topiary. And what I'm going to do is we're building our topiary upside down. So here I have my three stair step pumpkins and I'm just going to take the first little pumpkin and turn it upside down. And I can see I still have a sail tag on the bottom of it, but that's okay. It's, it's going to be glued into our topiary. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put some glue inside the, to the little pumpkin and also some up the side of the, the dowel that I'm going to put into the pumpkin. And I'm also going to put some glue, more, more of it on the bottom of the pumpkin so that when I put my second one on, that it sticks. And all around on the bottom of your little pumpkin that's upside down is where we're going to want to put plenty of glue. Now your dowel needs to be level. And so what I do at this point is you can either visually find um, either a door jam or find a, a straight place on a wall and make sure that your dowel is lined up visually. Or what you can do is you can take a, uh, what I have here is a little level that I keep in my craft room and I'm setting it right on top of the, the edge of the, of the pumpkin. Sorry, my arm is in the way, but um, then I can, once I get it pretty level, then I know my whole topiary is going to be level. But if I start out with it not level in the little pumpkin, then um, we're going to have problems and we're going to have a pretty lopsided topiary and we don't want to have that. So it looks like it's pretty level now, and I can kind of see that when I'm looking straight through to the door jam on my closet that it is kind of straight up and down, and that's good. So I'm putting lots of glue on the bottom of my pumpkin, and my pumpkin's upside down, so that's the bottom. Now I'm going to get ready to put my second pumpkin on, and I'm going to put it onto my second pumpkin the top is going to meet the bottom so what I'm going to have to do is glue it really well I've already put glue on the small little pumpkin and that's the bottom now I'm putting glue on the top of my second pumpkin because it's going to go upside down on the dowel and it's going to meet up then with our smaller pumpkin and I'm, I'm just making sure I've added more glue. I'm adding glue up and down the dowel because I want this to, to just glue together really nice and tight, especially because I'm going to put my topiary outside on my front porch. I'm not going to be keeping this one inside, but they are very cute to make um, to keep inside too. Now I'm putting our second pumpkin on and it's going down and putting the top on and now I have the bottom of this second pumpkin facing up towards me and I'm going to want to then get pl plenty of glue again now your topiary is going to be a little not very sturdy right now and so it may fall over so just kind of watch that it's kind of frustrating when it falls over but um, that's because it's you know upside down sitting on a smaller pumpkin and the dowel is pretty heavy. 
We're going to take more of our E6000 and we're going to take that glue all around the bottom of this little pumpkin is what it actually is. And um, I'm making sure that I'm putting a lot of glue there so that when I put the big pumpkin on, those two surfaces are going to glue together really well. And I usually put a little more glue down inside and I'm going to want to take some glue then on the dowel here in a minute also. And the more glue that you put on, the better. However, remember this E6000, and I, I probably talked about it, I don't know how many times, but this E6000 has a really bad odor. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you open a window and also put a little fan in your room. Oh, there it goes, falling over. I knew it was going to do that. Now I'm ready to put the big pumpkin on, and I'm going to slide it right down the dowel. And as I slide it down, it's going to be pretty tight, but that's what I want. There we go. And now it is upside down, and it the top of it is adhering then with the glue to our second pumpkin. And I'm going to want to clean it up pretty well because we're going to be ready here in a little bit to get it turned upside down and we're going to be putting it in our, our little um, container of, it's our plastic plaster of Paris. And I decided it's taking me so long to do this voiceover that if I say the wrong word or I stutter or the dogs are barking or the kids in the backyard are yelling, then I am not going to start over again or we're never going to get this video done. I have um, also a pair now here of little wire clippers and I'm showing those to you because that's something that you may need if you are going to take this little spray of fall leaves that I have here in the back of the topiary. If you're going to be cutting leaves off of it, you're going to want those little wire clippers. I'm also going to want to pick out a really pretty ribbon of some kind. And I like the ribbon that's got the, the wire in it because it's real pliable and I can do a lot of things with it. In order to put my ribbon on now on the dowel, I'm going to want to make sure I've got it clean, I've got styrofoam off of it, and um, I'm going to want to pick whatever color ribbon you want to use is fine, and we're going to put glue, this, this E6000 glue, all the way up our dowel, and then we'll start wrapping our ribbon around. And it doesn't take very long to do this, but it's just important that you've got plenty of glue on there. And as long as you've got a lot of glue, then it's going to, to finish up really nice and it's going to glue nice and tight. You're going to go all the way from that pumpkin and you're going to go all the way to the top of the dowel with your ribbon. And I've decided I want to use a solid colored ribbon, but you certainly could use any ribbon you want to that's a nice fall ribbon. And again, we're going to use our E6000 because this is going to go outside and it's going to get hot and cold and hot and cold out there. And it may even get wet if we get a, you know, a real strong rain or when we start getting snow. So the, I use the E6000 outside because it's more durable, but if you're going to make one for inside, remember you can use a glue gun because this E6000 smells bad and it'll smell bad for days and days inside your house. And my ribbon, I'm going to take probably about two feet or more and then I'm going to just wrap it around and around and around the dowel until I get all the way up to the top and it's it's kind of tricky when you first start but once you get your wrapping going then it um, it goes on fairly easy 
and I'm just going to go around and around and like I said this is about two feet that it's going to take and just keep overlapping a little bit and just keep wrapping around and as you wrap around you're just going to go all the way up to the top of that dowel and then once we get this all wrapped then we will put it in our plaster of Paris and it'll take us just a little while to mix that up the plaster of Paris when you mix it it's really important that you get a little bit of make a little hole of your plaster of Paris when it's still in a powder form and make a little hole in it and then pour your water into it just like the cement when we were mixing it if you don't kind of get it to where you can put the water and the powder together um, easily then you're going to get some big clumps and with plaster of Paris we're going to be using the little tub that the plaster of Paris comes in and it will get all stuck in the bottom so it it takes um, a lot of water and a lot of, of um, stirring to get your plaster of Paris just right okay it looks like I have gotten it wrapped all the way up to the top of the pole and um, I'm just just going and making sure that it's adhering to the glue really well and that it's gonna stay on our rod because we don't want it coming off and we especially don't want it to start unraveling when um, it's outside and I'm showing you now that I'm, I'm going all the way to the top and we'll want to make sure that cut it off you know if you've got some extra and then just a little more glue up there and you'll be ready to finish off your topiary stem or the dowel and what you're going to have is a lot of this ribbon is actually going to end up in the plaster of Paris but I like to finish it all the way up before I put it in the plaster of Paris just because I know that it's going to adhere really nicely inside the, the plaster of Paris once we get it put in. Now we're ready to mix our plaster of Paris. The plaster of Paris, you can buy it anywhere that you can need to buy plaster of Paris, like if you're going to plaster your wall. Um, I bought this actually in the craft store, so I bought this in Hobby Lobby. And you can find it in Michael's as well. It um, is, comes in a powder form, and then you're going to add water. When I add water here, then I'm going to want to, like I said, kind of stir it really fast down into the very center and push all the way down in. And I'm kind of pushing it in here and there, the water, so that it goes down to the bottom of this little bucket that it's in or this little container. If you don't, it's going to start setting up in the bottom and it's going to be pretty powdery down in there. Now it is very difficult to mix this plaster of Paris for some reason it's just it's just pretty difficult. It's not as easy as mixing the cement was. I'm using a just a, a you know a popsicle stick, a large one but you could use anything to stir it with just make sure that you are stirring clear to the bottom of this little container now if you buy plaster of Paris in a bag the same thing you're going to want to make sure you stir it up really good whatever you're mixing it up in so now I'm going to set it down in the plaster of Paris and the plaster of Paris sets fairly fast so at this point it's starting to get more like a heavy clay and I'm twisting to make sure that I can get my topiary down into the very bottom and once I've got it down in I'm going to kind of stir around here again I want to get it tight up to the dowel and, the, and my ribbon 
And I want to make sure again that I don't have a ton of lumps. So I'm just kind of pushing it, I'm stirring it around, and I'm pushing it up towards the dowel. Now this will take about 45 minutes to an hour to dry. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have some place that you can set the whole thing, slide it up against a wall on a counter um, or somewhere so that it's in the plaster and it is straight up and down. And you can take a either glance at it. Again, you could probably take a level and get your level on the table and bring it right up the side of that big pumpkin and see if it looks like it's sitting level. It's very important because otherwise you will have a topiary that leans to one side or the other. If that happens, you can level it then later in the container that you're going to leave it in, but it's, it's really good if you can get it started really level. And I'm cleaning up my little container. It's going to go inside of either a big pot that I bought or um, I also bought a big round wash tub and I got it at Home Depot and I found it actually in the painting section but you can find them wherever the big um, buckets are like mop buckets and um, they are really nice wash tubs you can get a round wash tub or I ended up getting an oval shape wash tub so now I'm telling you that just make sure that it is straight up and down and we are now, now we're ready going to be ready to, to finish our topiaries up and this is where you can use your imagination and decorate your topiary any way you want. I was thinking about using this pot and um, I could for one of my topiaries. What I'm going to want to do is I've set my plaster in my little tub here. I've set it down inside the pot and then if I wanted to use this I would get some little bag of of rocks and maybe pour some rocks around it so that it's in there it's nice and sturdy inside this pot and then you could get some fall leaves these are um, silk flowers that uh, you can find at the craft stores right now they're everywhere and you can take and finish up the bottom of your pot like this now I've also tied a bow right here, right underneath our large pumpkin. It's totally up to you. And now I think I'm going to make a bow and I'm going to put it up here. And that's just going to finish off the top. And you can um, pretty much do whatever you want. You could take some flowers and some like some mums and put them up there like this little this is something that I bought at the craft store it's got mums in it and it's got some little berries and some really big leaves you could just buy something like that and put that on the top of your topiary if you wanted to you could glue it on with a glue gun or some of your other glue but I think that what I'm going to want to do is I want to put a bow on top of here. Since I bought all this pretty ribbon, I want to use it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys noticed how I made the bow, but this is a good time to teach you how to do bows. So I have where I have cut and it's about two feet. Now what I'm going to want to do is take it and you're going to make it so that it's uh, like a little crisscross here. Like that. So you have a little X and you've got this part here. Now what you do is you bring those pieces together. So you've got your back and it's attached to the front where you did your little crossover. And you can rearrange it a little bit. Then you can take it and scunch it together like that. 
And at this point, you could just take a piece of wire and take a piece of wire and, and tie that together. I am going to actually take some of this ribbon because I want to have that nice finished middle here. So I'm just going to take it and tie it. And I love this, this wire ribbon because it's so much easier to work with than a ribbon that doesn't have the wire in it because it pretty much will stay put. So see I've tied that and now I have a nice bow and I have some extra little things coming down. I can cut those however I want to or I could take them where you can't even see them behind my bow. But I think I'm going to take advantage of having these extra little pieces. I'm just going to cut it off. You can see that. And I'm going to take this one and maybe shape it more to the bow. And this one back here, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so then that can go right up here. We will we glue it up there. And then to finish off here on the back side, I'll probably glue a couple leaves like that. So another idea that I had was I bought a it's just a um, wash tub and I got it. This was actually in the paint section. I was surprised. But I've seen them wherever in the hardware stores like Hobby Lobby or Lowe's, wherever they've got um, mop buckets and that kind of thing. And so I have this, this tub. And what I like about this tub is that it's going to add a little more oomph and, and you know, the bottom is going to be a little bit bigger of my topiary and I can put mums in with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put got a mum there. And I may not need this, but I might. We'll see. So let me find my other mum. Here it is. It sets down now nicely beside my topiary. Now these tubs, they had them, they weren't round, and if you got a round one, you could put your topiary right in the middle and put mums around it. This one is an oval shape, and it's going to fit nicely at my front door. So our project is pretty much finished. I'm really liking how it turned out. It's a lot of fun. Now that's probably not going to stay there. But I'm really liking that it's going to give some pretty color on my front porch and it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be something a little bit different. I hope you enjoyed the project and if you did go ahead and like and subscribe and also share with your friends you can go to our Facebook page or tell them to go to our Facebook page and that is Andre's Art and Crafts and you'll be able to keep up with whatever project that we're doing that's new. Take care. Bye.